So welcome back to another video of K Jet stuff. Now, long away it's CIS E or K E Jetronic E, being electrical. Um, been a long time coming, and a lot of people asked for it. So, I, as you'll see in the last video, I have got a meter unit cut apart to do a Bosch K E Jetronic, the inside truth, to show you exactly what goes on inside, how it works. As I got this unit on test, I'll show you how to do your system pressure test, um, which is what you're going to do in the car and just a basic overview of the differences, um, just to ease you into it because it can get confusing. So this is CISE or K Jetronic, came on your um, PL engine code, 16 valve Golfs, um, 2 litre 9 A's and the more modern one, sort of late 90, uh, mid 90s, whenever they've done it, um, all sorts of cars, Audi, Audis, uh, what else they come on, Passats, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, this is a very similar unit to the aluminium unit on, on the Ford, like the XR3Is, etc. But these are upside down and back to front and everything. So the same principle applies with your air plate lifts up, moves a fuel pin and lets fuel through. Simple, the same basic principles there. However, these are still adjustable, but the adjuster, adjusters are underneath the back, as you'll see in the next video when I get it done. Makes it slightly more awkward when you're doing fuel adjusting because you've got to test it, take it, move it off, adjust it, put it back on, test it. But that's how that is. So the adjusters are on the bottom. That's why they look like they're not adjustable. Now, how does it work? Well, we've got this and this. And on that side, you can't see is an air potentiometer, so it tells the issue, what the air flap's doing, what position it's at. So we have system pressure coming in as normal through our red line. That fills up the metering head and it comes out this pipe. So how do we test or check system pressure? Now on the old units, K Jetronic, you've got your shimmers you can change. And on these you can't. This is what dictates your system pressure if your pump's given out the right pure fuel. And there's two types of these. One is literally 5 to 5.5 bar, and this one is 6 to 6.5 bar. Give or take around. There's only two differences. This one in particular is the higher rated one, so this one's currently at 6.2 bar. So what does it do? So inside there, there's a little valve. Fuel pressure comes in, sits inside there, and goes back to tank. Now at a set point, the pressure gets high enough to unseat a valve and diverts fuel back to tank. Now, how do you adjust system pressure? Now, what you do, this is your return line off the back of your meter and head, so on the engine, this is where it sat in the engine bay, that's the front of the car. Take this off, and inside the back of this is an Allen key. Now, you screw it in, or you can screw it out. It doesn't move much. You probably look in on thread-wise, half a mil, 0.5, half a centimeter, so yeah. It doesn't move in or out much, but, that difference can make a lot so you screw it out so anti-clockwise to increase pressure and you screw it in to decrease pressure now simple way to tell if these aren't working take the back of that off so turn turn the car on system pressure blah 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 don't start it turn undo this line if you've got fuel driven out the back it's not working because it's not keeping the fuel inside it so that's the system pressure, pretty simple. There is a vacuum nipple on there, which goes on the air box. And even the technical drawings and how it works, it makes no sense why there's a vacuum pipe on there, because it doesn't do anything, which is, there's obviously a reason for it, but as yet, I can't see a reason. It makes no difference whether it's off or on, but that's by the by. So that's your system pressure. What's that? I know you were looking at it. That's your electronic hydraulic actuator, EHA. Now, it's literally a bypass valve with an electromagnet inside, which moves an arm across and diverts fuel pressure to chambers. So this has system pressure, not on the bottom, on the top. So system pressure is in the top. Control pressure or differential pressure is in the bottom. So fuel comes in there, fills at the top, pushes down on the springs, lets fuel come up. And it goes into part of this. That then diverts X amount 
to the lower chamber, which is our differential pressure. That then pushes the springs back up, closing the amount of fuel coming up. Now there's a very important differential that you need between top and bottom at 0.4 bar. It says in books 0.2 to 0.5, but 0.4 is really where you want it. So if you've got 5 bar system pressure, sorry, 5.4 bar system pressure, you want differential pressure to be 5 bar. Now how do we do that? Simply, the same way you'd have your gauge and your two lines and your tap checking the system pressure on cage at, you do it on this, but you have an output here on the top, which is not your control pressure, system pressure, and on the back side of it around here, there is a test port which just has just a, a, a port that's locked up. So you take that out, put the other one on the back, so you've got here your simple test gauge. Now we have the tap open, so that lets you have system pressure. This system pressure is, what was it at? 6.2 bar. And then with the tap closed, so you tap open, 6.2 bar, you close the tap, do your system pressure again, prime it up, you should have, or you want, 0.4 bar less than system pressure. Most important thing is make sure this is unplugged when you're doing any tests. So all the electrical stuff on this, bar the panometer, make sure this is unplugged when it's on your car before you test and adjust anything on this because you want the base settings with no electrical influence. So all this set perfectly, then when this is plugged in, that's when the car does its job. Now, that is there, system pressure's up, air flaps up. You have inputs from the ECU, for example, the air the potentiometer, how hard the air flap is. You'll have engine temperature, um, you'll have feedback from the O2 sensor, oxygen sensor. You'll have feedback from oil pressure, RPM. All those sort of stuff and now all those inputs come in and then they go out to a current that's sent into this now relevant to all those being perfect you put your foot down air flap comes up as high as it was getting drawn that sits in position position where maximum fuel is delivered as it sort of is if you've got a duff temperature sensor it's not working that's going to provide a different feed to this meaning you're not going to get enough fuel so that's going to partially close and not let the system pressure do what it should be doing it gets very complex i'll try and keep it simple i'll explain more about it in the other video again it's just an overview of how to do your system pressure so where are we at back to front unit system pressure set by your pressure regulator very easy to adjust and set now how do you get that 0.4 bar difference by adjusting your system pressure. That's where you want to do it. You can take these off and adjust them, but that is for fuel flow. You don't want to mess around with that at the moment. That's, that's future our demonstrations. So this one came in, it had um, a higher fuel pressure, 6.5 for example, I can't remember now. Um, and the differential pressure, Differential pressure was 0.6 bar, so it's 0.2 bar too high. It doesn't sound like we're talking a lot of pressure, but 0.2 bar is a big difference between actually injecting properly. So all I did was reduce the system pressure. Because differential pressure shouldn't really change that much, but it's the input on this. So you've got your differential pressure and your system pressure. Now this bit will float around this bit should stay roughly where it is. So it's, this one's been at 5.8 bar. Obviously system pressure was higher. I've adjusted system, system pressure down to it's like the minimum that can do. Um, if I wanted to go any lower, I'd have to change that for a different unit, the lower pressure unit. So we've dropped it down to get to that magic figure. And that's all to do with differential pressure. Same with your cage jet, which was, you had your equilibrium. That's not pronounced right with your metal disc where you have up and lower chambers, even pressures on it, as soon as the fuel pin moves, it sends more fuel to one side than the other, overcomes that difference, fuel comes out. Right, so while we're here, I'll do a system pressure, you'll see the difference. So you can see the gauge, we've got our tap open, so that should give us our system pressure. Boom. Notice how quick that system pressure gets in there, because it hasn't got to go in 
and like on cage out it hasn't got to go in act against a spring and the shim build that pressure before it releases this goes bang there's a the fuel pressure you sort it out later on if that makes sense so So there we're at 6.2, 6.2 bar fuel pressure. That's with the tap open. Now we close the tap, simply as you would do on your car. Cycle the ignition again. Five point eight bar. So just do it again. 5.8 bar, it looks slightly off from the camera. 5.8 bar, and again, system pressure. 6.2 bar. So what we've done, you can see now I've wound it all the way out, as far as it'll go. And then put this back on. Little nip. So again, now that has now wound up. I tap it open still. Uh, so what pressure are we at now? Ooh, that's a lot. So again, you wind this all the way out. As far as I go, it'll physically stop on the thread. And then that is out. Whoop! Something popped. Yeah, so goes a lot of pressure. So that is going up to what was that? Nine bar fuel pressure. And you can see that's actually popped the pipe off there. And that pipe normally puts up with, well, I've never changed that to be honest. So if you are doing system pressure, make sure you're doing it right because again, like I say, that pump will smash in fuel pressure there very quickly. It's not like the cage electronic where it builds up, builds up slowly. It will go bang, there's that fuel pressure and that's where stuff can go wrong. So what we do, we'll fix that. We'll wind that back where it should be to our 6.2. And you notice now, residual pressure is very high, which we don't really want. So we're back to where we want to be. Now, I literally, when I press pause to start doing this, that pipe went, <laughs> hence all this. So again, be careful when you do it on your car. So now I've cleared up most of that mess I made. Um, this is back to where you want it. Now, the last thing I'll say is residual pressure. Now, again, with the K-Jet, we have our hot start problems where you haven't got residual pressure being held in the metering head because the fuel lines that sit down the car, the fuel in them evaporates. And again, you've got your fuel accumulator at the back. When the fuel evaporates, it pushes that fuel up. But we still need residual pressure in the cylinder head. So how's that set? That's also set by this. Now, I just set then I haven't showed you because it take, it's quite long-winded. This was set at 6.3 bar now um, and 5.9 system pressure. So uh, differential was still our magic, 0 0.4, which is what we want. So where that was set, residual pressure was, you want about 2.6 bar after about 10, 15 minutes. That's what the book pressure is. Obviously, the higher, the better. Now, when adjusting this, it was at system pressure at 6.3. I've managed to do a full 1.5 turns anti-clockwise, which should be increasing pressure, but it's not. System pressure stayed the same, but the residual pressure has now creeped up to, that's 2.4, 2.4 bar, and this has been about 25 minutes now, so that's, that's all right. So again, this does system pressure, but also it does a lot with residual pressure. Now, if I probably done another half a turn, another full turn, you're gonna start raising the system pressure. And it's very hit or miss. There's um, a small gap between balancing, again, everything's a balance and that's with K-Jet, whether it's K-Jet, K-Jet, Motonic, all of it. There's a balance and act, a fine line between getting the system pressure and your differential pressure and your residual pressure where you want it versus going too far and going boom you've got you've got like your eight bar and you start blowing fuel lines so again it's a a very complex system but it's the fundamentals are there 
again once I've got that cut apart metering head all like nice and coloured in like we did the other one I'll go through it a bit more slow and you I can show you where the fuel goes what it does how this actually operates um, and it'll just give you a better understanding like you did with the cage at so thanks for watching that one I said I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you how to do system pressure on these in the car again it's very different to a cage at but it's not that different still very simple couple of things like I say your residual pressure system pressure and your differential pressure 0.4 bar is where you want it it's the perfect happy medium so look forward to the next one when hopefully it'll be that all back together all painted nice and we can go for it an inside truth of KE Detronic so cheers for watching I'll see you next one bye